Hi, and welcome back, everybody. My name is Cashaway, and this is part five of Turn About Substitution. It's been a while for me. It's uh, been about five days, five or six days since I last recorded one of these. Uh, you won't know that probably based on the way I upload these. I've been uh, trying to practice some of my editing skills. This is kind of like a trial run for me with editing. So I've re-uploaded the first episode a couple of times, and I'm going to try and get better at it. Uh, just let me know what you think of the setup that I have here with what you can see and stuff. So when we last left off, we just broke Miss Sky's testimony, I believe is what happened. I, it's, been, it's been a while, so I actually don't remember what I just proved. Uh, all right, okay, so in the last episode, we we completed the investigation and we decided to start the trial for Judge Chambers. We met uh, Jessica Poole and the new judge, uh, Greg Strings, and I believe the assumption that was proven wrong is that Miss Sky said that in order to get the body out, uh, Judge Chambers carried the corpse of the victim out of the jail cell and then went back which doesn't make any sense because a why would you go back to the crime scene and b why would you how would the judge carry him out because he's weak so that's where we're at at this point and i believe jessica Poole is going to still try and prove that that the judge is guilty Let's see. Right. So I think she added something to the testimony. This is what we proved wrong. Because we asked why, how could you possibly know without a body? This is a new statement. Let's see. So we're talking about Judge Chambers' uh, robe. Like that one. I like the reskins a lot. Actually, you know, I think I was wrong about what I was said about Rhea. I think, um, about how how the creator of this game made this. I think a lot of these are, are like, created drawings of the characters or whatever. They're not just reskins. I mean, I'm not really sure how they did it, but it's really cool. Um, okay, we knew that already. I think this is an old thing. We never really talked about this. Okay, wait. So, we have to go back to that piece that she just added, because usually, in Ace Attorney, whenever a witness adds something to the testimony, it usually has a contradiction in it. Especially if it's the only one that that is added. So let's see. So let's go back to what was said. So is there? Let me go through my evidence again. So what do we have? We have the again. It's been a while, so I don't I don't remember what we have. So we have the attorney's badge. And the bracelet, of course. And the request. And, okay, so now this is it. Blood, gun, uniform, letter. Golden plate. And a bust. And a wig. And a photo of Rian. And my phone. And that's it. So. So why the ro- Oh, right. Right, this was said already. So it's the uniform. So the defendant was wearing a uniform. So this should be the contradiction. So let's see if I'm right. I am right. Yay.
Wait a minute, how? That still is very weak. Oh, come on, that's not solid. What, the uniform sapped up all the blood out of a head wound so that no blood whatsoever dripped out on the floor? Really? That's what we're going with? I, I even said it in, I think I said it in one of the other episodes, why not just use the bed sheets to clean up all the blood? But there's no blood at the door, and the uniform's not going to sap up all the blood out of a head wound. If you're saying got shot on the floor, there's a lot of blood in the head. So, there's no way. Not to mention, it's not just blood, but all the brain material and stuff out of a headshot wound. That's fl that's flimsy. Th okay, whatever. I guess that's what we're going to go with. They still have not explained how, they got how Chambers got rid of the body and why he would come back. There's, n there's none. I mean, I guess to go back and clean it up, but... But what finger... Oh. But wasn't Meekins there? Wouldn't he have seen... No, there's something flimsy about this. There's no way this is it. I guess we have to go to the witness first to see exactly what you saw. Yeah, okay. So we're going to talk about the motive, even though this is such a flimsy argument at best. I get the motive, though. The motive is easy, because I believe Chambers' brother was killed. Wait a minute, Chambers was judge? Why was Chambers judge for a murderer that... Murdered his own brother. Why would that be the case? Okay. Let's take some water real quick. Alright. That's flimsy, Apollo. Do I present the letter there? I mean, I could present the. Le uh, I'm gonna go through the evidence for the thing first. It's a little early for this. Also, it doesn't technically exist, right? Because they burnt it. Okay. Okay. And it still doesn't necessarily prove that he didn't kill him after he came. It just proves that he came over there. Why would... Wait a minute, you wrote down conversations... And... Yeah, it's like you knew. That's really weird. I don't know. The thing is, if... Here's the thing. We... I believe that... I'm trying to remember everything that happened when I last played this. I think there was something with one of the people looking like the... Yeah, it was this. This guy and this guy look exactly the same. It's just this guy doesn't have a mustache and and this head thing, and the hair rather, not the head thing. And I'm saying head thing because we have a wig in our possession that is actually very much shaped like the like this. Like, no. The, uh, where are you? No. No. Yeah. So you could say that's not hair, that's just a wig. And that this is him without the wig with a shaved mustache. So maybe... That's the only thing I can think of, is that maybe he's not dead. 
and that he's. But Sean O'Fisher is a, is a is a security guard at the asylum that was hired. So, how does that work? He was guarding himself. I mean, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Also, there's Meekins, so obviously there's. I mean, I'm not really sure. I mean, I think he's involved, though. I think whatever it is, he's involved. I know Paul Strings is involved because of that phone call he received. I remember that, too. Because the bus talked or whatever. And that might have been him. I don't know. I think someone else killed... I'm not really sure. I have no idea who else could have murdered other than Chambers right now. I have no... I have no suspects at this point. There's just a lot of... Things. The only suspect I really have is whoever called Paul Strings on the phone when we accidentally answered it. That's literally the only only lead I have is whoever that was. But who was it? It might, it might be someone we haven't met yet. Yeah, I know. I don't really know how to contradict, like, we're, I think I'm getting a little ahead of myself, and we're trying to prove this testimony wrong, but I don't know how we're going to prove this wrong, because the, the, the motive for Chambers is obvious. That's like the only thing I can see. I understand very clearly why there's a motive against him. So I don't know where we can contradict here. So I'm supposed to present the letter that doesn't exist. Is that what I'm supposed to be doing right now? Now where do I do it at, though? So wait a minute. So I'm supposed to present his real motive. I'm going to present it here. I said earlier that we can possibly present the letter here, so let's just do that. Okay, it worked. The problem is I don't have any physical evidence to back this up. This is just the defendant's word. So, but I guess this is the only thing I can do to fight this. That's the problem. I think both arguments are kind of weak, though, but... But yeah, I guess we had to tell the jury something. That's the new way to do it with the jury system. You know, you know, the judge is being pretty fair. I forgot about this guy, and how like they had to create a new judge since Chambers can't judge himself. But right now, yes, the prosecution is definitely winning this case. Because I presented absolutely nothing. Okay, good. The next witness. Oh, shit. Oh, no. 
Oh boy. Okay, here we go. Mike Meekins. My name is Meekins Prison. I'm a guard Mike, sir. Perfect. I mean, I'm prison guard. I'm a Meekins Mike, sir. I mean the opposite, that I'm a prison guard, and I'm Mike Meekins, sir. So, from last time, I think I remember that he said that he let Chambers in because he had a gun. I, and he was wearing the uniform. So I'm very interested to see what he says. Because my assumption was that Sean O'Fisher and the victim were the same person. But that can't be true because Meekins had to have seen them both at the same time. Unless he really is that stupid where... He didn't even under he, he didn't even know that the prison that he was guarding or the prisoner that he was guarding was the same as his as his co-worker. So So obviously you failed at this part. Alright, time to break him apart. We're almost running out of time, but I'll go through the testimony at least once. Maybe I can find it pretty quickly. It! So you failed at this part. This is annoying. So yeah, that's irrelevant. So two reasons. I have to contradict one of the reasons, probably. What? So a beard? You're kidding me. Fisher testifies to this. I don't understand why the prosecution would send Meekins out first and then and then Fisher. I assume Fisher's gonna testify now after Meekins. Okay, so this is where the contradiction is going to happen. So, should I finish this out? I, I guess I can finish. Let's just finish it out. So, 
I guess I'll say Meekin's guns are relevant, and how Chamber obtained the guns are relevant, so how Meekin saw the gun. because now his fingerprints are on it. There it is. Okay, so this proves that he was holding the gun. That doesn't mean he shot it. So we'll continue with this next time uh, with the next part. So I am Cashaway, and on the next episode, we will continue to break down Mike Meekins. So until next time.